Hi. Uh, thanks, Brian. I'm Jeremy. Uh, this is work with uh, Darren and Gurgle about why people start new online communities and how they conceive of success at the point when they're, when they're first founding them. So I want to start with two arguments about why it's important to study the founders of online communities. And the, the first is that they have outsized influence. They're, they're important uh, in many contexts, for many types of organizations, founders can influence how and whether the organization grows. Uh, there's plenty of anecdotal evidence. For example, we would probably all agree that Katarina, George, and Linus have each influenced the growth and culture of, of their respective organizations. There's also empirical evidence that founders can influence both firms and online communities. The second argument is that studying founders' goals and motivations can tell us things about populations of communities that might otherwise be invisible uh, and can expose assumptions and help us question assumptions about how a system works. For example, much of the current literature uh, and design about online communities assumes that to be successful, communities need to be large, long-lasting, and productive. However, we know that most online communities are, are none of these. They start small, they stay small, and they're quickly abandoned. Uh, so what are people thinking when they start a new community? Are they trying to build big communities? Are they trying to hit the attention lottery and become the next Wikipedia and just simply failing most of the time, as we have implicitly assumed in a lot of research and design? Uh, to, to get at that question, we surveyed founders on Wikia. Uh, Wikia is a wiki hosting platform. Uh, some of the largest wikis are about popular media, uh, such as uh, Wikipedia, which is about Star Wars, or the one wiki to rule them all about Lord of the Rings. Uh, Wikia also allows users to create new wikis about any topic. So over the course of a few months last year, we worked with Wikia to send survey invitations to every founder right after they founded a new wiki. Uh, we, about 600 people responded. Uh, we asked them about their long-term goals, their immediate motivations, their uh, plans for community building, and their expectations for how the community would or would not grow. Um, I only have an eight-minute talk, and you didn't come to hear about survey methodology or respondent demographics, so let's go on to the results. So uh, we use the, the literature on uh, motivations of online community contributors. Uh, to create 13 items regarding founders' motivations. We use factor analysis to collapse those down to these five main categories. Um, as you can see, so one of the findings from the contributor literature is that people have diverse motivations for contributing to uh, online peer production, and, and founders similarly have diverse motivations. Uh, the biggest surprise for us was how common the desire to share personal content was, uh, such as fan fiction. This is a motivation that doesn't show up much in the contributor literature, nor would you see it if you just looked at the most popular wikis. Uh, founders also had diverse ways in which they said they would measure success. So we had them rank the different measures of success and how they would rank each of those. Uh, and this is a, a distribution of their top goal, what they said that was their primary goal. Uh, we were surprised to see that the creation of a high quality information artifact was the most important, was it the most important to the most people uh, rather than building a community or growing the amount of content. Uh, the free responses actually revealed one more thing that we hadn't thought of, and that was creating a resource that was useful, whether or not uh, other people contributed, that other people used it. So one of the, one of the arguments about, uh, and some that came up earlier, about why large-scale peer production is successful is that web technologies reduce transa transaction and coordination costs, allowing people with diverse amounts of knowledge and time to contribute. So it's sort of the, the freedom idea. Uh, I want to argue that community platforms like Wikia also reduce creation costs, which increase the diversity of organizations that are created and the diversity of the motivations that can be represented. Uh, so our respondents provided empirical evidence about just how low the barriers to creation are. When we asked them how long they'd thought about starting their wiki, the overall response can be summarized by this motivational poster. Uh, is, in short, is very easy. So more specifically, uh, they, uh, about half of people said that they had st thought about it only for a few minutes to a few hours before they uh, started their community. And remember, these are the results from the people who also were willing to take a survey. Uh, and so the reality probably skews even more toward impulsivity. Uh, so what types of communities does, do these low barriers make possible? What are people doing? When we asked the open-ended question about why they started their wiki, 
Uh, many founders were starting niche communities with modest expectations. For example, uh, one user wanted to organize an offline role-playing game. Another wanted to gather information about a book series that they enjoyed reading. And a third said they wanted to provide resources to support their 67 YouTube followers. Uh, so it's supporting this idea that people are intentionally building small communities. Uh, when we asked people how popular they thought their wiki would be, 67% uh, said they thought that in the next month, 10 or fewer people would contribute. Um, interestingly, the, the shape of this graph actually looks a lot like the actual shape of wiki contributions. It's highly skewed like this. And so, so what can we learn? What, what's the takeaway from, uh, from these simple results from this survey study? First, that bigger is not always better. Uh, this is obvious in offline contexts. Many communities gain some of their value from being small or short-lived. Uh, in hindsight, it's obvious that small online communities are equally valuable. Uh, and our work provides some empirical hints at just how widespread small-scale small small groups are. Uh, second, we should not assume that all online communities seek growth uh, as goals or longevity. And we should be careful when using these as dependent variables. Uh, the many meet their goals without these outcomes. Finally, we provide evidence that small communities may be in some ways categorically different from large communities, even on the same platform. Um, and they should be studied and supported on their own terms by focusing on only large communities that we may be, have been missing out on a lot of diversity in how people use social software and underestimating the total value of online communities to their users. So there are a number of uh, future directions that we would like to go with this work and hope that others do as well. One, one obvious place to start is to find out how generalizable the results are. Uh, wikis are a very specific type of online community focused on information aggregation and certainly the specific motivations and goals uh, such as information quality uh, would probably not hold across different, uh, different contexts. Uh, however, the idea that founders seek to build modest communities that have a modest scope, we think would hold across multiple contexts, but it's, it's worth studying empirically. Uh, second, we want to argue that there should be more research on new communities, that it's a valuable, unique empirical context for studying questions that are important across lots of disciplines uh, about how people form collectives. Uh, we looked at this initial uh, decision to start a community, but there's lots to do about learning about who early contributors are and how they interact. Uh, I think there's enough that someone could maybe write a whole dissertation about the topic. Uh, so uh, one aspect that we looked at a little bit in this paper is uh, how influential founders are and how they might influence the outcomes of a community. So just because they have goals and motivations doesn't mean that that translates. Uh, and so well, we didn't look at that, the full path. We did some initial work looking at, uh, we asked them if they plan to implement some of the community building suggestions made by Kraut and Resnick in their book. Um, and unsurprisingly, when we compared those whose goal was community versus those whose goal was information quality, we found that those whose goal was community were more likely to be planning to implement strategies to build community. Um, but more work should be done to kind of look at that whole path from motivations to community building to community outcomes and see how it all fits together. Uh, so thank you to my co-authors in absentia. Uh, thank you to Wikia for the help, NSF, and, and of course to our respondents and reviewers. Thanks. Jake. Hi, uh, Jake Thiebaud, speaker, Group Lens Research. Um, I was wondering how you think about the potential for change in how a founder thinks about their community. Um, you know, in it, should a community get popular, right? Uh, you know, the people who started Wikipedia maybe didn't set out to be one of the top 10 most popular websites on the, on the internet, right? Um, but now that they are, uh, I wonder how you think about the, the transition point or the temporal dynamics of uh, intent and, and goals uh, as a community grows and, and achieves popularity? Yeah, no, I think it's a great question. It's, in fact, that's something, I even have a paper title picked out, like accidental success. Like I wanna study if this happens, right? Do, do things become successful just because they become successful despite their founders' goals and, and what happens to founders after that? I think it's a, a really interesting question, yeah. So that's all the time we have. Let's thank Jeremy. <laughs>